Well, we are less than two weeks away from bow season right now. I'm so excited. I'm shooting every day that I get a chance right now, but for bow hunting, there is a lot of gear required to get into the stand. So me and Dill decided we're gonna break it down for you guys from top to bottom, what we bring to the stand. So I'm not gonna say anymore. We'll get right into it, guys. Enjoy. Well, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Dill and I are getting geared up for the hunting season. We still got a couple weeks until it opens and our fishing tournament season is done too. So we're just kind of getting everything ready. We've been working on hanging new stands, getting food plots and everything set up and just kind of all the, all the work behind the scenes before the season starts. And while we're doing it, we've got all of our gear here. I just figured we'd kind of do a gear breakdown. Nobody requested this video. I just, I figured maybe, you know, some of our equipment might be useful for you guys to know, or maybe you're just curious. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll just kind of break down each piece of our equipment. And then I'm actually going to do some timestamps for each of these. So if you just want to know about one specific thing that we're going to talk about, then you guys can just kind of skip to that area of the video. But I think we'll, uh, Start with the bows, huh? Yeah. Right, so, well, what you got over there, D? So, I'm still shooting that Matthews Halon. I believe this is the 32 six inch brace height. I got a uh, Apex Covert single pin sight here, a NAP Archery six inch stabilizer. Last year I got the Hamsky Primer Rest. I've uh, been a big fan of that so far. I was shooting four fletching, but went down to three fletching and I was, had good success with this one. Typical kisser button. Shooting roughly 62 63 pounds about 28 inch draw yeah the funny thing like with that is it, it actually it like looks so similar to this do. realistically like yeah it's, it's kind of funny because that's do you know how old that is i believe this was 2019 2019 2020 the halons came yeah. out oh sweet well and then for mine i just got this two years ago it's the matthews v3x so we're both shooting matthews and we're not sponsored but uh matthews hit us up matthew yeah, seriously <laughs> that'd be nice but yeah this this v3x is super awesome man I've, I've loved this bow since i got it um i went with the 29 inch axle to axle i'm six foot tall i was really in between this and the 33 but there wasn't a sizable difference when I shot them of how, how I felt anchored. So I went with the 29 compact. So when I'm in stands or a ground blind situation, it's just uh, works out good. Um, I guess we'll start with from the top. I have the Spot Hog Fast Eddy. Um, it has to be that in riser mount. And this is one of them that, that Matthews offers. And I really like this sight. I used to shoot at HHA and it's pretty similar to it, so I, I really do like that sight a lot. Uh, my rest, I just have a QAD, um, the Ultra Rest works super good. I've used QADs for quite a few years. I've tried a couple other ones, and I I do like the QADs. Other than that, stabilizer. Honestly, I couldn't even tell you what is that an Apache. I think we have like the same one. Yeah, I think we both got NAP. Yeah, the stabilizers on them. I'm not too particular with my stabilizer, um, at least not yet, because whitetail hunting, you're not really making super far shots, so it works for me. I actually have the Bomar, uh, the, the nose button, and I have really liked that. I, I felt like I was getting some jumpage from my bow when I'd use a kisser button because I pressed it in too far. Dill does great with it. You you use it really well. It just, when I switched the nose button, I, I actually saw a, a big difference in my accuracy so nose button i really like other than that i i think that pretty much breaks down the bows so we're both shooting matthews these are our setups for this year and uh you know they they really are are nice bows dill shoots really well and do it definitely shot better since I one thing i did different on mine i was never a big fan i came from bowtech right. i would switch over to matthews once i got the halon and i put the bomar grip tape on them again not sponsored but bomar josh hit us up <laughs> I like the Bomar grip. It's a lot better in colder weather. It doesn't get the cold on it. It fits, I don't have the biggest hands, but it feels like it fits my hands a little bit better. I have a little bit less tendency to grip and get a little twisty with it. So 
that is one thing I am doing a little bit different on my Matthews. Just changed the grip up a little bit and threw that grip tape. And I think it's helped since I put it on. And you can kind of almost form it to yeah. sit in that foam palm too if you wanted to. I don't know if you actually did that. Yeah, I ran it a little bit up higher. So yep. on the top of the grip here, where kind of that webbing between thumb and index goes together. I put it a little bit thinner up top and then a little bit thicker where my palm rests. And that's helped me not grip it as bad and be able to shoot and get a little bit more release on my bow after the shot and not torque right. it. You know, yeah, so both shooting Matthews, a little bit different setups though, but they work great. For um, a release, oh yeah. I am shooting Scout Archery. I've shot a whole bunch of other ones. Um, True Fire, which is what I started with. I think Jake's still running it. Mm -hmm. I switched over to just the jaw clip, True Fire, and that, uh, that's been a good one for me. I like it. One of my favorite things about it is that it goes all the way back so I can tuck it in my sleeve when I'm climbing up sticks and I'm not tinking around. That was probably my biggest reason of going over to this. Yeah. I noticed that that, and they say that you can do it with the true fires, but I have never got it to comfortably work that way of folding it down. But yeah, I have a true fire. I also have, what is it called? A jaw hook? I believe it's jaw hook. Jaw hook. I got that jaw hook and it's super nice because I can literally just be looking at a deer and to feel my string, I can see where my D loop is and just loop it right in. I love that, but I'm a big fan of the true fire releases. So that's what I, what I shoot for a release. Oh, arrows. Next up, go over to arrows. This is one of the most controversial topics for bow hunters too, because everybody has something different, I feel like. Yes, I was, I jumped on the hunting public, heavy branch ferry, heavy FOC, big arrows. I've shot, uh, shot a couple deer with them so far and had great success. These are vectors, they're now method, 300 spine with the 65 gram outsert, shooting a 100 grain QAD Exodus broadhead. And I actually was shooting the four veins, but I switched them up to three vein with a heavy right helical. It shot better out of my bow. For Knox, I have the Luminox. Yep. That was, okay. Yep. So for Knox, I have the Luminox next to Jake's Nocturnals. I don't think they're as bright, so I might switch over to them this year just for better footage, finding the arrow, arrows easier. And overall, it's been a great, great shooting arrow. It's a little heavy. It's 580 grains. So it's a little heavy for Michigan Whitetail. I don't take a lot of shots over 30 yards, but it's worked well so far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like you said, I mean, like that shoots out of your bow really well. It comes out just straight shooting and, and whatnot and really just kind of have to find what, what works for your bow really good. Yeah, um, once I went over to the right helical, I noticed that I was getting better grouping with the broadheads compared to the four veins. I don't know if that was just a me problem, but I put it on there and I liked it, so I ran with it ever since. All right. All right, so mine, I actually run the uh, the gold tip, these these Hunter XTs, I think is what I got. Yeah, I have a 340 spine, so pretty stiff arrow. Overall weight, I think, I think I'm about 470, 475 grains, and that shoots out of my Matthews super good. I've also had gone to that heavier setup and it, it shot pretty well out of my PSE, but this seemed to be, since I got the Matthews, just, just perfect. I'm also running the QAD Exodus for a broadhead. It's just really forgiving and I've never had a broadhead shoot as closely, I should say a fixed broadhead shoot as closely to my field tips as this one does. Um, they come out of the box super sharp and I've had a lot of good success. I mean. They aren't the big expandables, but if you hit a deer in the right place, the blood trails are plenty free to follow. I just still have the, the, the standard gold tip fletchings on here. I think that's something I'd like to switch over eventually to like the AAEs or something like that. And then like Dill was talking about, I have the nocturnals on here and I really like them. I run, I run the greens, um, but I don't really have a preference either on color. It's just, what they had there available in the size. So that's my arrow setup, about 470, 475 grains, and it shoots out of my bow super well. So I really, I really do like this setup. We'll go to optics, I think, next. Optics. So for optics, Dylan and I both have this uh, Fordham Outdoors. Bino harness? Bino harness. Chest harness? Yeah, chest harness. Dill first got got his and i was like man that's super convenient and i've always wanted some and we both 
didn't want to spend a ton of money on them, so we just found these on Amazon. I believe they were 60, 50? Yeah. Maybe less. 60 bucks, 50 bucks, something like that. Yeah. It uh, it works. You know, it's our first, it's my first harness. I think it's Jake's first yep. chest harness too. I was dabbling, getting into it. I wasn't sure how I was gonna like wearing it. Wasn't sure if it was an interview with me shooting bows. I seen everybody going to them. So once I tried them, I think it's probably my favorite accessory when it comes to hunting. I I don't want to forget it when I go to the stand. It comes with the front pocket on it, zipper pocket here. Normally I put my release there when I'm, rifle, when I'm bow hunting. If I'm rifle hunting, I'll put knives or tags or snacks, something in there. Mm -hmm. Has bungee rangefinder on the side. For rangefinder, I'm also shooting a Amazon special. I'm not sure what it is. I bought it four years ago for like 90 bucks off Amazon and it hasn't let me down. Gets the job done. So we'll run with that. Also has a pocket on this side, which again, you'll put tags, you'll put something else in there. I put spare plates for my outdoors edge. As far as optics, I am running Vortex Diamondbacks 10 by 42s. I feel like it's the tried and true for bow hunting. We're in Michigan and I, if you get a 300 yard field, that's about as far as you're gonna see up here. Most of the stuff we're looking at is 100, 150, maybe 200 yards away out in the field. So 10 by 42 works great for us and it's a pack that I do love to have. Keeping on optics, I actually run the same exact thing. Mine are a little older version, but I have the Vortex Diamondbacks also in the 10 by 42s. And just like Dill said, they're they're lightweight, they're compact, and they're just perfect for whitetail hunting um, around here. So I really like those. Um, and then I actually, for a range finder, I got a Vortex, I don't know what kind it is, to be honest with you. I might have to take a look and and see exactly what kind of this is a, a vortex rangefinder and honestly i used to have one of those old bulky ones that you actually held sideways range with and this thing has been a lifesaver it's so light it actually changes the angle for you too um to show you know the difference when you're up in a tree stand of how you should shoot it and i, I really like that rangefinder so yeah optics for me is vortex right now all the way around and again like we said we are not sponsored by anybody here so these are just kind of with our experiences what we've kind of accumulated for gear and what we found that we liked so you know there's no obligation for us to say that we really like this if we don't if you have questions on any of this gear too just let me know either in the comments or uh, shoot me an email or something and, and i can answer any questions about about this stuff but um kind of bouncing off of optics trail cameras there are so many different types of trail camera brands and i have not found a brand that i like more than tacticams by a long shot i've tried so many i'm not gonna throw any brands under the uh, you know under the table here because uh you know they all they all will take pictures and stuff but just tried and true tacticam is the easiest for setup the price range for the cameras is cheaper than a lot of the higher end ones when I think this is high end. The the whole setup for it and, and getting the camera linked and the app use, I love the app. I've tried a couple other ones and I don't like them compared to it. So um, yeah, I think between me, Dill, my my dad, and, and then our buddy Giuseppe, who's also part of the um, Elevate Outdoors crew, between us, we probably have like 10 of them and no issues ever. I, I truly, really like these Tacticams. They, the battery life too is awesome. And the quality of pictures isn't like phenomenal by any means. It's not like we're in ultra HD, but you can tell if it's a buck or a doe and you can really pick out everything you need to from the pictures. So we pretty much strictly run Tacticams on, on the trail cameras and, and really like them. So the cell cams are, are the way nowadays. I don't mm -hmm. think that either of us run any traditional cameras where you go and check SD cards. Right. Keeps you out of the woods, keeps you up to date, and I feel like the less you can be in the woods checking trail cams, you don't have to get that excitement. And it's always great getting those pictures while you're either at work or doing something special and know you got a good hunt looking for you afterwards. Exactly. Compared to others, that it, it's yeah, you, you can't know, go cheap on the SD better. cards. You need they recommend yep. SD cards and go with it. Don't try to save the ten dollars and exactly. fifteen dollars and get the cheap SD cards. They won't read. They won't send. Your picture quality won't be as good. Yep. It's better just to bite the bullet. And as you can tell, we're not name brand everything here, but yep. the SD cards for the track 
Tech games are one that we will yeah, spend I think, money on. I think I get the HMEs is, is what I run, the 32 gig HMEs, and, and those were great. And the SanDisk Pro Golds, they're probably the, oh, that's right, yeah. the most expensive ones, but I get the best pictures out of them with it. I get the best, it, it affects everything. They send faster, they send better, and I have yet to have an error message with the Pro Golds. Perfect. I guess we'll go to stand stuff. So for well for me stand stuff soon to be soon to be saddle but um for stand i this is kind of for my mobile hunting stuff i, I have some like preset stands out and run a lot of muddies to be honest with you they seem to be a pretty pretty good value and i don't have any issues with the platform size or the comfort of them but this stand is the hawk helium i think it's the xl because it's got a little bigger platform it is super lightweight extremely comfortable um, I, I really like my my Hawk Helium as far as a tree stand goes. These are the Hawk Helium 30 inch um, climbing sticks. Anyways, the Hawk Helium 30 inch climbing sticks, they have that, that suction to them, which can sometimes kind of be a pain to be honest. When you're trying to, to pull them apart, it can be really tough, but it keeps them together. I mean, I can hang on to them just like that suctioned and then i am not a huge fan of these straps is the only thing i'll say compared to like dylan straps um, i'm not a big fan of these because you have to get them around the tree just just like every other but when you go to do it it seems like sometimes they're a little tougher to tighten and if you ever get in a pine or something like that you get sap in the buckle it makes it a lot more difficult for any of your, your future hunts but i could upgrade the straps i'm just kind of, I guess, punishing myself with them. So that's the only thing I'd say. Otherwise, these, these are pretty lightweight. I think they're comparable to others, but I, I have the 30 inch, so I only, I only run three, but they, but they work good. So I got the Hawk sticks and then I run the Hawk helium on my tree stand, my hang on, so. So yeah, I also have a Hawk helium light tree stand that I used last year. This year I just went, got on another craze the saddle craze I want the latitude method two panel I haven't put it in a tree yet so I don't got a whole lot to I have a hundred out of it I put it in the trees played around with it so far it seems comfortable I like this one because it has absolutely no metal on the saddle itself I got the kit which came with the tree tether the linesman rope and a pouch with a two panel you do have the adjustments here so when you're walking in you can keep it nice and compact when you get in the stand, this one goes around your butt, this one goes around your back. It's almost like a back band without having to pack it in. It's gonna, you'll see in the future whether I like it or not. I think I'm gonna like it. I like the lightweightness of it. I like that it has no metal on it. It's not loud. The patch, that pack that comes with it, it's nice size. Mm -hmm. um, that fits both your ropes. Yep, I got too. the tree tether and the linesman in it right now. No issues there. Mm -hmm. uh, just regular Pru-6 on my ropes right now. I'm probably gonna change up to an ascender because it just seems a little bit easier than the pre six. As far as step goes, I have the Hawk Helium 20 inch, four of them. They do have the ropes in them that have the little notches cut out so you don't have to do the buckles, which I like better than mm -hmm. those. It's way quicker. Same suctions. Um, what you'll notice with these is that they're a little tough to get on and off and this inner ring will kind of break and they say you can run a knife and cut that out and they don't bite you as bad. I haven't done that yet. Um, once you get them together and apart a little bit, I don't think it's that bad of an issue. So those, that's going to be the what I'm running this year. We'll see how I like it. I think it's going to be quite a bit lighter. I'm shedding 12 pounds, 14 pounds yeah. for my hang on, which I think is going to be a big deal when we go it's down to Ohio and I do some of the Michigan State land stuff. Mm -hmm. and I think I'm gonna be a big fan of it. I'm gonna, I actually ordered a saddle too, so I'll kind of break that down after I unbox it and stuff. Um, once I've used it a little bit too and kind of give you guys my review on that. I went with the Cruiser XC. I'm super excited about that, but as far as packs go, you wanna start it out, D? Yeah, I have the Bellas pack I bought last year. Fits everything I need to it. I got my camera gear in the front pouch. I can put my steps right here. You can see my camera arm hanging out it. Fits. Pretty much everything I need and then more. Has a bow rifle spot to put down below. It's 
As far as backpack goes, I've always had the cheap ones, and I spent the money on this one, and I'm a huge fan of it. It does have the brace on the back, so you're not feeling what's in the backpack. It has a waistband, buckles up front, and it's a little heavy, I think, but it fits everything I need, and it has enough cushioning that it's worked so far for me when I was out in Ohio last year. Right, I mean, that's going to be perfect for, like, out west, yeah. too. Um, and for here, when you don't, if you aren't hunting state land, you don't have to walk as far, like, that heaviness doesn't... I don't no. think affect it as much as long as you can fit all your gear. For me, I have this Timberhawk backpack. It is huge. I mean, this th this thing is huge, but it's really similar to Dill's to where it does have that that back support in there. Really nice straps, the waistband, even a chest chest buckle there. I mean, it has so much room in it. I put all my camera gear basically on the outsides. I can hang my bow on the front if I'm doing a hang and hunt. Mobile with all this stuff. I can clip all that into and uh it's it's super comfortable and nice to have all the support so timberhawk <clears throat> is this one i really do like the backpack overall and it does everything i need it to then other than that targets we don't really have a specific brand i have this this uh reinhardt block i just got last year and this thing is sweet it uh really got <clears throat> kind of self seals after you shoot into it, and, and I really like it. Other than that, we have a Glendale that we shoot as well. I got a six by six block that yeah. I shoot at my house. <coughs> Tried a whole bunch, something to throw broadheads into. I think the self-sealing foam is the best way to go. Mm -hmm. When it comes to just shooting practice tips, we've had bags, we've had the foams. Those those work, but they just don't handle broadheads. So I was yeah. new last year for both of us are the self, what is it? Sealing? self-sealing yeah. the ones that you can shoot broadheads into they don't blow apart and yep. it's it's nice to start shooting your broadheads towards the end of september and making sure yep. you're on and ready to go for october yeah other than that for uh for apps we both run on x for everywhere especially when we're hunting out of state it's a super useful tool we have like wind apps and stuff but i don't get into like the hunt wise and all that i haven't yet uh, just not something i do yeah, I think that's that's pretty much our rough gear breakdown. Funny thing is, this isn't even half of our, our hunting stuff. Oh, for camo, I run all first light. I just kind of upgraded to that two years ago, and I love it. All the all the different pockets and everything that they, they came up with, I run the, the Spectre camo, and it's just perfect for the Midwest, and you run... Uh, Nomad real tree patterns. They run some great yeah. deals. They'll get 50% off a lot of the times. <clears throat> I just upgraded of that. I've had hodgepodge pieces here and there for a while, and so I just got a couple new Nomad sets, and those are, they work. You know, I, I like them when it comes to late season, it gets a little bit different. Up here in Michigan, when it gets real cold, we'll transition either blind hunting or doing something different. You might wear something else, but as far as in this tree stand for bow hunting, I run strictly Nomad. Yep. Yep. And then, other than that, as far as camera gear goes, I don't think we're gonna break that down. If you guys want to see a video of all the different cameras we use, um, we could even do like a setup in the stand to show you how we set things and, and whatnot with some different camera angles. There's a lot that has to go into it. You know, I've been trying to do it for quite a few years and Dill's just kind of now getting into the film inside of things, but he's taking it running um, really well. And so if you guys want a breakdown of all the camera gear that we use, I'd be happy to do that. So just let me know in the comments if you want to you see kind of our different camera setups, some of the settings that I run, and then, um, you know, kind of our setup when we're in tree stands or hunting from the ground or whatever. But other than that, that's kind of, that's kind of our gear breakdown here. Uh, I hope you guys found that useful. And uh, I'm going to try and link in the description where you can find all this stuff with with the names and everything it's gonna be a decent list but i'm gonna try and i try and link everything below so if you guys want to check out any of the gear that we're using this year you can do that yeah but we're, we're getting geeked up for the season it's uh two weeks away just about we'll have a couple videos coming out of of former hunts and then kind of dive right into the season and i'm super excited for it so Thank you guys for tuning in. If you like this, if you like kind of getting some information from us on, on the gear and whatnot, leave a like, comment down below, let us know. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. If you wanna get a notification when we post videos, you can hit that bell and uh, it'll alert you when we do post videos. So thank you guys for the support. Thanks for watching. 
Have a good night, and we'll see you on the next video.